about how I would get a good second order behavior, and particularly one that I can design and control, um, and, but again, only using resistors and capacitors. Now this is going to be a three op amp type circuit. Um, there's a couple different configurations of one. This one is a very particular form of it. Um, Kerwin, Husselman, and um, Husselman, and Newcomb. Um, I've at least gotten to, I know two of these individuals, um, at least met two of these individuals, and is one of a couple different forms of circuits you get like this. And one of the things you see in circuits that built, are built like this is you're building around, for example, I have an integrator structure here. You'll notice the R and the C coming through here, which gives you a response for V2 to V1 that gives you an integration. Similar thing for V out to V2, this is also an integrator. So I basically built two integrators. And then on the front end of this circuit, I have another op amp, which is basically doing a number of sort of summation kinds of operations between various aspects. One which is building, taking an input, one which is taking feedback from this node V2. Uh, and that actually, you can argue, is all sort of a, you know, it gives you one sort of configuration here. In fact, sort of a positive feedback aspect. And then you get another one in the opposite direction, which is kind of a negative feedback. Um, or sort of gives you your resonator part of your structure. So these things give you some very interesting dynamics and topologies. So, you know, we can start with a single capacitance, and then, so these two are straightforward, and then at this really around the behavior around this op amp is where things get more complex um, in complexity, not necessarily imaginary. Um, and what you end up finding is I've got an inverting amplifier here between R1 and R4, and so this is where superposition is extremely helpful because I know that I can go from V out to V1 through this R1, R4 case. Yay. And then I also go from V in to, you know, if I had this particular node here, this is going to be 1 plus, you know, R4 over R1. So you can kind of see that here times whatever this voltage ends up being. Well, that voltage is interestingly... Uh, it looks like a voltage divider from V in to that node and from V2 to that node, which then gives me these resulting sort of dividing terms. One could write KCL, plow through some additional math, but it's really useful to have some intuition and go, here's how I continue to kind of work through it. Well, I know what V2 is as a result of V out, so I can work with that. I also know what, you know, so I know what that V2 term is going to be, and I have V out here. So, Good thing here is now just start working through um, the analysis of the circuit. And you get some math, and it gets a little bit messier as you sort of expand things, group all the terms in this point. You get a whole bunch of stuff for V1. And you get a nice sort of term all in the numerator. Again, try to keep as many of your terms numerator-centric as you can. It tends to keep uh, errors minimized if you don't have a lot of nested fractions. And from this structure, I can then see what my transfer function is, which interestingly enough gives me a nice canonical low-pass filter, where I can control the gain depending on what um, my values for R, R1, R2, R3, and R4 are. I, and this is a low-pass filter because there's no S here, but it's S and S squared. I can figure out what my tau is. I can also figure out sort of what my Q is. Now my Q term gets a little bit messy, and we should look at that. One thing to notice, by the way, is this is a low-pass filter that comes out of V out. If I look at the response of V2, it's actually a band-pass filter. And you might go, well, why is that? Well, notice I, for me to go to V2 to V out, I have to do an integration, which is a 1 over S term. The only way I can do that is if I had a band-pass, first order, you know, had a band-pass, a single S term in the numerator, to then get rid of it. So the feedback holds that. Likewise, I know that at V1, this is actually a high-pass term and I get a high-pass filter out of that filter, out of that structure. So if I look at the tau, and sort of my, my Q that I would get would be very similar whether I look at the, the low-pass, band-pass, or high-pass response, it requires solving all of this for tau. A little messy, but just nothing that you can't just do a little bit of algebra. You know, and so now you get this interesting R2 over, I mean, R, R2 plus R3 over R2, and this interesting sort of combination of resistors of a, sort of the geometric mean of R, R1 and R4 over the sum of R4 and R1. And I figured it made sense to kind of look at this over a whole range of values. Imagine that I have R1 through R 
obviously keeping C at one, one nanofarad, just to kind of keep, keep apples to apples comparison. I've got a whole bunch of R's here. Let's say they're all the same. I'm going to get a tau of one microsecond and a Q of one. And you're like, that seems pretty good and not terribly surprising. What happens if I make R1 and R4 both equal to four kilohertz or four kilo ohm and leave everything else the same? Well, it turns out by, again, the kind of way things ratio out, that I again get a tau of one and Q of one. And so we get kind of live around that space very simply. I can look at different cases of R2 and R3. I can look at a case of just shift R on its own, which you notice does not show up in the Q term at all. Um, and it does show up in the tau term, and so that's obviously going to shift my tau. Um, I notice if I change just R1, that changes the tau. It also changes the Q to be now 4 fifths. So it's not a strong function, but I can move it around. I can also do things with R4, and it shifts the tau in a different direction, but Q is somewhat. So I've got some range here to work with in my calculations. Um, but this is actually a very, very interesting circuit with a lot of different properties that I can tune and change with basically six different parameters to get a tau and Q that I would want for a particular.